Obviously, I'm the funny brother. Are you joking, mate? Are you having a laugh? <laughs> I'm Joe Baggs. And I'm George Baggs. You may have seen us on Gogglebox with our family. You might have listened to our podcast, Not My Bag. You might have watched us on TikTok, messing around from time to time. <laughs> That's why I'm here. We are here to grill an unsuspecting BBC News correspondent about topic in the news. They have no idea how hard we're going to go in on them. I'm not holding back with these questions. We're going to ask anything we want. We're going to cut through that news lingo. Let's do it. <laughs> Coletta Smith, the BBC's cost of living correspondent. It's my job to try and make sense of the crazy price increases that we're seeing day in and day out. I am prepared for a grilling today, but I've absolutely no idea which celebrity guest is going to be putting me through my faces. Wood panelled ceilings and green floor. <laughs> no leakage here. <laughs> you might be living with a weirdo. So shall I just go home? <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> What we're going to do today is talk about money, the topic on everyone's mind at the moment. But I'm delighted that I just get to sit back and put my feet up today because somebody else is asking the questions. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Wow, the two Lovely to meet you, <laughs> Joe. Joe. I'm George. Nice to meet you. Hello, George. Nice How are you? Sorry, Coletta. we're huggers. Uh, well, I'm a hugger too. Oh, yeah, good. 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 I'm glad. Joe and George. Yes. Right, that way around. Yes. Yeah, Lovely to meet you. Come and have a seat. Exciting. Anyway, come and have a nice. seat. Right, George, might have to sit <laughs> here. Sort of yeah, sit, sit in a row. Oh, we got. Oh. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you what you do. We were on Channel 4's Gogglebox with our family, okay. and then uh, now we do like content creating online, got a lot podcast. of TikTok stuff. What do you do? So I'm the BBC's cost of living correspondent. Okay. So I. But you've been busy recently. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, do you know what we're going to be talking about here today? It's no. all still top secret? No, yeah, literally Nobody's top secret. leaked it, no? <laughs> no, no leakage here. <laughs> it's Brent in particular. Right, okay. We're talking about the rental market. Okay. You are asking the questions, guys, and I get the grilling. It's time to flip the script. We're ready. Get the script. Where are they? Where is it? Come on, bring them in. <laughs> What we've got here is a buzzer, so that when you get a bit businessy, a bit, a bit too much news jargon going on. No idea what that even means. All right, George. That's, that's why does I it make a noise? Uh, yeah, it does. Do you want to see? I'll test it out, right? Okay. It's a polite shut up. Let's get down to business, shall we? Mm -hmm. So, question number one: What is affordable housing? It basically means either a home to rent or to buy that's cheaper than the market generally. Right. So for rent, it's a set number of houses that have to be built, often in new build housing development, so they'll say a certain percent have to be affordable housing, and that means that, that they have to be rented for about 80% of the average rental price in that area. So that's okay. going to look totally different right. across right. the UK. What's sure. affordable in London will look very different to what's affordable in Glasgow or in right. Sheffield. So is that relative to the exactly. areas? Isn't it that... Um, up to a certain amount of houses, you don't have to have it affordable in like a new build. So exactly, like most of them, or... most of them won't be affordable. What have you known that? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry, I'm a bit of a dark horse here. Really, aren't I? Picked up a good lot there. I know, I know. Yeah. Anyway, next question. Mm -hmm. He hasn't been muting the news. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't. <laughs> oh, yeah. What are boomerang kids? Well, I think probably you are one. <laughs> it better be good then. So, Joe, you're not yet. Have you lived away from home at all? Have you stayed at home all the time? Or did you go away? Were you away for college or uni or anything? No, he's no. not done anything. No. No. Well, then no. actually, actually, you're not quite a boomerang. Okay, so boomerang is... Wait, I, uh -uh. I like went to Australia, uh -huh. then came back, uh -huh. then moved away again with a partner, then came okay, back. Okay, so it's you. It's completely <laughs> it's all you. You should have known. I'm the awkward one. The boomerang kids are the ones that go home to their parents either you know after as you say traveling or being away at university oh, okay. maybe even trying to work you know in away from home in a city or whatever yeah. then suddenly they find rent's too expensive life's too expensive and they come running oh, back home and tell uh -huh. me about it <laughs> should there be more rules for private landlords like rent control 
So there are a lot of rules for private landlords. Uh, Sorry, just sound a bit, <laughs> sound a bit boring. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> right, no, I'll carry on. Just trying to get more interesting. You just nodded off there, did you? <laughs> oh, it's a nightcap. So there are some rules already. The government's introduced a good lot of legislation. They've actually just put in a whole load more, uh, particularly about when people can be uh, kicked out of a of a rental. So they've restricted how often people can be kicked out but a lot of people are calling for rent controls as in the price yeah i feel like it's ridiculous and i know that it's happening a lot in london where they're just going extortionately high but people are forced to pay it because there's no nowhere else to go yeah. which is just awful because it's like they're putting up the prices for example say for example for joe's place but then if joe wanted to look elsewhere they're also everything everyone, even more expensive going up. so yeah, yeah you have no there choice. does need to be a bit of control with it otherwise the only people benefiting here are the landlords aren't they well, yes, in the long run, I suppose. But the problem with setting a, a cap or a control, you know, in terms of the wider economy is that that means that the landlords don't necessarily make enough money, although it seems like they're making a lot when you're yeah. renting. They're paying a massive mortgage at the moment. Right. If they don't make enough, then they might just decide to sell. Okay, fine. And part of the reason why rent is dead expensive at the moment is because there actually aren't enough rental properties on the market. Is that kind of the reason why the rental prices are going up so much or is there other contributing factors? Yeah, there's a load of different things. The biggest is that the loads of landlords are leaving the rental market at the moment. It's a lot of hassle, it's a lot of legislation, a whole load of new rules were introduced about the EPC rating of your house. <laughs> now what does I that know mean? what that is. Go on. <laughs> is it energy performance certificate? Yeah, yeah. I actually used to be an estate agent, so <laughs> oh, I know. I'm ready for the daggers to be thrown at me Hang now. On. We're doing a piece about rental prices and you're only just dropping in that you used to be an estate and agent. A, yeah. And a lettings agent. <laughs> Maybe you should be in that hey, scene, you eh? should. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it does make sense why landlords are like putting up prices and stuff really i know they come under scrutiny and fire they do and i, I don't want to be the one that sounds like i'm sticking up for the landlords because i know that are you pro landlords <laughs> <laughs> it's hard but if you think about it from their perspective yeah. they are facing a lot of extra charges mm. uh you know whether that's because of regulations whether that's just because of the mortgage rates and they're obviously trying to make some money out of it you know they're not just doing it for the fun do you I think it's the senior yeah. estate agents <laughs> I do blame the estate agents. Let's blame, let's blame all the estate agents. No, not, makes, all, not all of them. It makes sense though, because obviously, yeah, if you're looking at the market and you're like, the one down the road, mine's bigger and he's charging 300 Exactly, yeah. I can charge more. Yeah. Okay, so to help wrap our heads around all of this, we've got another game to play. This is cool. Okay. It's a game of guess the rent. And you have to play separately round one and round two. So it's, this is a head to head, really, you between the first. two I'm of going you. First. Fine. Are you ready, George? Bring it on. So here is the first property. It's in Klimpian, Scotland. It's a cottage with four beds, recently renovated, underfloor heating. How much do you reckon it'd be per month? Bit of a stab in the dark. 1500 quid a month. Uh, much, much lower. Lower? Lower like than that. Are you joking? 825 a month. Oh, I was double. That's a steal. So, okay, that's your starting point. Okay. So I'm going to turn over the next one and you need to say 800 whether the quid price starting point. All right. is going to be higher or lower for a property in the Lake District. It's a bungalow, two beds, lovely views from the garden, mind. Less, less, yeah. I'm going to go less. It's a little bit higher. Oh. Those lovely views in the lakes. <laughs> oh god. Next one, what do you think? This one's in Brighton. It's a double bedroom. So you're in sharing with someone else and that person's a big fan of fast food and sci-fi. You might be living with a weirdo. Uh, I, I think I think more because I live with someone like that. <laughs> this one was 850. Higher or lower than Higher. 850. It's Brighton by the sea. It's a little bit lower. I... <laughs> so wait, so you've lost them all so far? Yes. So this one was 800 okay. in Brighton. What about in Salford? Seven. Terrace house, seven beds, wood panel ceiling, green tiles throughout the property. Um, I think that's lower. Seven beds, are you sure? Seven You don't want to rethink wood that one again? Wood panel ceilings and green floor. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like the sound of it, okay? No. So you think it's lower? I think it's lower. Uh, uh, uh. It's Clean much, much sweet. higher. That one is 4,000 a month. In fact, just a little bit over that. So I'm afraid, yes, unfortunately, you did get all of those wrong. Wow. But it oh. shows, I suppose, you, there's a big difference, right, right the way across the UK. Uh, and maybe stuff that you don't expect 
Okay. Right. Yes. So you're up. I'm ready. First one. Whoop. Planned lies. You've got a double bedroom here. How much do you reckon they would charge? Five fifty. Bit more than that, but not too much more. Six two five. So is this one going to be higher or lower? In Manchester, it's only a flat, but it's three beds. It's fully furnished and it's got its own electric car higher. charging port. I'm going with higher. Yes, most definitely correct. Well, I've already beaten George, so shall I just go <laughs> home? <laughs> well, hey. uh. Just nearly, nearly two thousand a month. Blimey, that so is a lot that's still. That's a huge jump. What do you reckon to the next one? Notting Hill in London. Oh, no, this one's only a studio flat rather than a three bed. It's it, everything you can need, but it's all in one room. I want to say higher. Sure. Positive. Final correct, answer. Correct, correct, correct. Yes. It's 8,000 per calendar month. That is disgusting. That is insane. That is disgusting. Which is a lot more. Eight what about grand. in Sheffield though? You've got a mansion of six beds, dining room for 14 guests, and a parking lot for five cars. I would like to go with lower. Lower than Notting Hill? Yes. Correct! I got all these ones and I didn't got get any of my own. Sweat. Thank you, it's the estate agent in me. So the one in Sheffield was five and a half thousand per calendar month. Still a lot. Still a but lot then of money, also you get a seat. You, that you're a lot is for your money. crazy for Notting Hill. Isn't it? Eight, eight, grand. eight grand. For a studio flat. It's one, that's all that for is one room. Absolutely wild. How does the UK rental market compare to like Europe, you know, because if I can't rent properly here, I might want to go to Italy, does, do you know what I mean? And does what's happening here affect Europe? Are we like, have, have we got that much of a mm, so, play in it? So we're seeing inflation go up everywhere across Europe as well. So prices will be increasing across Europe and especially those energy bills will be increasing. But in most European countries, the level of home ownership is quite low, particularly in Central Europe. So people will okay. be in a rental property, you know, they'll go into it in their 20s and they'll still be in the same property often in their 60s or 70s. No way. The idea is you, you rent a home for life and the rent is much lower. You have longer protection. Okay. Uh, you can't get booted out in the same way and often the price you sign for is the price it stays at. Oh, really? So that's why people are reluctant to move. So your advice is flee. <laughs> run, run. What I got from that was run away. Up, yeah, maybe. <laughs> in a nice central European country. You heard it here country. first. <laughs> I'm very like solution driven in the way that I think and not to call you out, but this has been very sad newsy. I'm, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> no, you've just been giving us answers for the questions, you know. You're just telling Are you us the facts. going to burst because it's sad? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's really sad. Um, what's the light at the end of the tunnel for some people? I'm desperately trying to think of some light None, here, there's none, is there? I feel like the government are as well. This is bleak. So, <laughs> so I suppose that there definitely are, there's extra protections coming in for tenants. Mm -hmm. Like we talked about the idea of energy performance certificates. So people's houses, you know, will be getting warmer, more efficient. That means your bills will be coming down if sure. you're renting. That's all positive stuff for tenants. And you're getting better protection in terms of not being able to be chucked out as a tenant. We're talking about something else as well today, not just rental prices, but you're going to have to guess it, okay. just like you did the first time around. It's not a music round this time, it's an emoji round. Emoji Ooh. round. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. This is ludicrous. Very Gen Z millennial. easy. You okay. guys will get it in two seconds, no pressure. Are you sure? Oh. Okay. Yeah, don't do that. That is so a lot of pressure. The topic is... Tropic Ladder. Oh, as if you got that before me. <laughs> did I get that? <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Yep. I was going to say house ladder, but I thought well, that doesn't make sense. That is kind of, yeah. I was looking at the, the tree. The first thing I looked at was the tree. The I'm tree. saying like... No, it's not the tree ladder. It's the housing ladder. Okay, cool. The property ladder. The property the ladder. ladder. Fine. So that's our next... Fine, fine, fine. Now it's you guys to ask the questions again. Then. Let's flip the script, babe. Let's flip the script. <laughs> what are the benefits of owning a property over renting? You don't have an annoying landlord to have to deal with. I guess that's the main benefit, yeah, isn't it? You can make the so. space your own, do what you want, uh, but also you don't have to pay rent. And at the moment, yeah. that's a biggie. Often mortgage rates are cheaper than okay. rent. So for a lot of places, actually, if people manage to get on the housing ladder, they'll end up paying less for their mortgage than they will be doing for rent. Okay. And the downsides? 
you don't have a landlord to call when something breaks. I'm just You've got to fix this. it yourself. I wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> and actually, that's expensive. Lots of people think about buying the house in the first place, maybe you know, putting a lick of paint on it or doing up whatever they need to, but they don't necessarily have enough saved up as well for that first thing that goes wrong or when you've got to buy the kitchen or yeah, all, all the extra bits that you yeah, need. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm. Just another question. Um, so I remember from school doing geography um, the, there's like green belt land, isn't there? Yeah. Which you're not meant to ever build on and get planning permission on. Uh, but nowadays with the, like, they're needing space for houses and stuff like that, they are building on it, aren't they? Green belt is supposed to have higher protection, but it doesn't prevent right, okay. there ever being planning approval, or even on green belt land. So often councils would prefer that you converted like, you know, a, a derelict site. Why don't we build right. the houses here instead? Yeah. Because this is a, you know, an easier place to get that permission passed and we like our green fields. But as you say, the UK population is growing. So mm. we need more houses somewhere. So who decides how expensive mortgages are? Um, the Bank of England, I suppose, is the short answer to that question. Right. The best way of describing the Bank of England is the bank that the banks go to. Okay. So all the banks the have to buy. The big daddy bank. Oh, you took the words right the out of my mouth. The big daddy Tell bank. That is what I will use from now on. The Bank okay. of England is the big daddy bank. So when they charge more interest mm. to all of the other banks, HSBC, Lloyds, Barclays, all of those different The mini banks. What are they called? The, the little daddy bank? <laughs> <laughs> the baby okay. banks. The baby bank. Okay, okay fine, baby bank. When bank. they charge more interest to them, okay. then they pass that on to us and raise mortgage rates right. so when the bank of england put up the interest rate that base rate then that's why people's mortgage rates go up often by the same percent okay fine and how does a bank decide who to give a mortgage to so banks and building societies use lots of different criteria mm -hmm. the big thing is do you have enough deposit and if you do then often you'll get your mortgage approved but credit rating is also part of it and that's probably something oh, you guys are aware of because they're lending you not. a massive amount of money. Yeah. They need to know you can pay it back. Exactly. Yeah. So they look at your credit score and if you haven't been paying back on your buy now, pay later stuff, if you Klarna? haven't been paying back... I don't think I've even paid for this jacket yet. <laughs> on your clan or your or credit card, shoes. then that's going to lower your credit score and make it a bit harder to get a mortgage. Do you have any words of advice or not wisdom, but maybe words of support for younger people that feel like at the moment mm, that they'll us. never buy a house. Because there are a lot of people out there that feel like they'll either be trapped in the rental market or never see owning a property as an option for them. I think it is worth thinking about what different options are out there and what help is available. Because actually I think people will be quite surprised by how much extra help is there. Like there are a lot of government schemes at the moment. You can do sort of co-ownership. There are help to buy schemes where the government pays. A I've seen a that co-ownership. It's like you can own like 20% of a house and I know it exactly. sounds weird. But exactly. Like, yeah, you own like almost like a percentage of it. Didn't exactly. You? Yeah. And then you pay rent on the on the rest, you know, the 50% the that you yeah, don't own, yeah. but that's a lot less rent to be paying. Mm. And at least, you know, you've also got you a big chunk something. of the house that you own, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you gradually, 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 you know, are able to, to buy more of it. And I think sometimes if you make a really deliberate savings pot, which a lot of people are doing, mm. trying to, you know, put it into a, an ISA or some kind of savings pot that's going to maybe earn you a bit more money. Yeah. There are options. Don't rule it out and actually make a deliberate attempt to save. Look at what help might be available. Mm. Think about, you know, maybe clubbing up with somebody else. Maybe it is about buying a house with somebody. I'm not going to suggest it between the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely hard for a single person to buy on their own, and it's obviously it's easier for two to buy together. Yeah. Okay, so we've covered a lot. Are your heads fried? A little bit. <laughs> Not too fine. bad, the rosé help. Okay. <laughs> what have you managed to, <laughs> to pull out of whatever I've, I've said? I've learned a few things. I'd say number one is that my brother actually listened during geography at school. <laughs> that blew my mind. I'd say, um, it, uh, so rental market in Europe, um, you know, rents have been more protected there was really interesting to find out. And what else have I learned as well? The whole severity of the situation and the difference as well between landlords moaning about having to sell maybe a half million pound property and then people actually 
sitting there talking to you saying, I can't even afford another hundred pound rent. It really just shows like the, the severity of the whole situation. Um, also the how like bank, the Bank of England and banks all around affect buying properties and stuff with like mortgages or renting. It's, yeah, it's all really interesting. I hope that one day in the not too distant future, you'll be able to get on the housing ladder. Well, when we do, you're coming to the house for me. You bring in some of that rosé. <laughs> and you can do a house tour, because you're quite good with the house, you know what I mean? Okay. Walking about there was really good. Great, I felt like okay. I was well, you can give the tour to the <laughs> estate agent and yes. have a good look yeah. around. You're a terrible estate agent. <laughs> Thank you very much and good night. <laughs>